Welcome back to Flipping Pages, Stirring Sauces. It has been a while, and I would like to say Shalom and gratitude to the people who have liked, subscribed, and shared. My last video was taken down by the international censors of information that they do not like. They stated that I was spreading mis medical information. What is mis medical information? Really, what is that? What does that mean? Somebody please define that term for me. And if I was spreading mis medical information, it is information that was put out there by the lemonade makers. It is information that the lemonade makers, um, they were forced to release, to release by a judge because they wanted to cover up that information for 75 years. And in that information or the documentation, that is now public information because it has gone through the court process and was ordered released by a judge. It talked about millions of people who died as a result of drinking the lemonade. It also spoke about millions of people who were maimed, injured, and suffered permanent um, debilitating effects as a result of drinking the lemonade. And when you speak the truth, the powers that be, or the self-appointed world censors, take your information down, suspend you for a week, and gives you a warning. Anyway, today I'm going to be discussing several things, but I wanted to um, let everyone know to look out for my um, online shopping venture that will be starting soon. On there, I will be featuring this book. Um, this one is called Too Precious to Love and um, I am the author and um, so this will be featured on my online store along with my sugar um, hair removal kit as well as my egg free dairy-free and gluten-free bake products so that will be launched soon I am very tired because I have been very busy um, but you know it's 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 all worth it um, and I still have to put rollers in my hair before I go to sleep I washed it yesterday and um, my hair takes 6 to 12 hours to dry thoroughly and um, in order for me to put the black castor oil in it I have to allow it to dry naturally completely um, before putting the black castor oil in because the if you put the black castor oil in while it's still damp, it's going to smell funky. And who wants funky smelling hair? So, and um, that also allows whatever you put on the, the scalp to migrate to the ends. And that way you don't get that sticky, yucky, um, greasy feeling on your hair. Um, yeah, whatever you put in there migrates to the ends through sweating, touching, 
whatever it naturally migrates there so anyway yes I'm quite excited about um, my upcoming project and um, tonight I'm going to be talking about um, William and Kate's visit to Jamaica um, apparently they're touring the Caribbean right now so I'm going to be talking about that family I'm also going to be talking about my employer pure later and I'm also going to be answering um, a question and um, it's funny while I was preparing for this episode I received an email from pardon me <laughs> from um, a good a good friend of mine whom I've spoke about before on here he's a friend that um, visits me quite often in my reoccurring dream where he walks up a path to um, onto this porch where I am with um, white linen curtains blowing in the wind and he walks through a field of yellow and white flowers and he comes, he hugs me, he kisses my forehead, I serve him breakfast he eats, we have a conversation, and then he leaves. And um, I was with him um, yesterday, or I guess it's the day before yesterday. I was with him on Monday. Um, I would made him some gluten-free banana bread, finally. <laughs> and we sat and had a nice chat and shared banana bread. And... Um, it was lovely hanging out with him and um, sometimes when I haven't seen him in a while I will think about him and I will get a message from him or a phone call or an order for something and um, so today when I was preparing for the topic he sent me something which is so relevant to what I will be discussing because I was going to discuss that exact same thing and he sent me a, a picture and um, so I'm just going to get right into it um, copyright disclaimer whoops under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976 Allowances made for fair use for the purposes for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. And I just want to share a picture with you of what he um, sent to me. Well, that's very interesting. I brought it up. It was here. And now it's not. So now I have to um, pull it up again. Okay. No problem. Um, ah, here we go. Take a very good look at that picture. And this picture is what he sent to me, which I was making the notes on to discuss. 
in this segment. Now, we all know that recently Barbados made history when they got rid of Elizabeth Windsor as the head of their country. And now her descendants are doing a tour of the Caribbean. And today, or maybe it's yesterday because it's way past midnight, they landed in Jamaica. Now what I showed you was the Order of St. Michael and St. George. And that is a medal that Elizabeth Windsor awards to ambassadors and diplomats for distinguished service. And I'm sure there are a lot of melanated people running around with this metal, with this metal, thinking it's something wonderful, but it's not. If you look closely at that medal, it depicts a white angel standing on the neck of what appears to be a black man in chains. And that is what they think of us. That is what this family thinks of us. There is also a video out there of William in a meeting with others discussing royal assets and how to keep them in check, how to keep them poor and submissive. The universal censors issues penalties and take those videos down of anyone who puts that video up of this young man in this meeting discussing these issues. Assets. What are assets? In layman terms, assets are tangibles that you own. They are things that can be sold for a price, traded, given away. But assets suggest ownership. And melanated people are referred to as royal assets, meaning the so-called royal family owns us. Whatever celebration or anniversary brings William and his wife to Jamaica is a celebration of theirs, their grandparents, their great-grandparents and their great-great-grandparents' oppression of melanated people. They found these melanated people in North America and the Caribbean when they arrived here. And they also stole some of those melanated people from Africa and brought them to North America, Europe, and the Caribbean. And eventually, they started referring to the Africans who were stolen from Africa and the melanated people they found in North America and the Caribbean as Africans. Because if they were Africans, it means that they couldn't claim ownership to land in this part of the world because they were Africans. See, they um, assimilated the Africans in with the melanated people who were already here and um, 
they were all, or my ancestors, the ones who were already here and the ones that were brought over from Africa, became slaves. They were taken into captivity and became slaves. And eventually they were all referred to as Africans to take their land and their possessions. Now, Bob C. Grange, she's lucky that L.A. Lewis is a gentleman. If he was not a gentleman, when she manhandled him and armed him up, armed him up, grabbed him by the arm, and told him that he didn't belong there, she would have gotten a swift backhand right in her mouth, and deservedly so. And the reason is, she physically assaulted him, and he was well within his rights to defend himself. He, as a Jamaican citizen, has the right to be anywhere in public that he so chooses in Jamaica. And her grabbing him by the arm and leading him away, telling him he didn't belong there, that was assault. I don't advocate physical violence against anyone, but if it was me, she would have gotten a swift backhand. Now Jamaica welcomed their future oppressors with open arms and treated them like they were some kind of deserving dignitaries. They are anything but. And I know some people will unsubscribe and call me a racist, but the truth is the truth. And I'm going to cover the truth as I see fit, I will tell you what they are. They are number one, our oppressors. They are thieves and pillagers. They are rapists and pedophiles. The jewels in the crowns that they wear were stolen from Africa and India. The gold, the silver, and the platinum in the crowns and the other jewelry that they wear were stolen from Africa and India. They need to be returned to their rightful owners. And what they didn't steal, they tricked people into turning over to them or manipulated people into receiving them. When they bumped into us in North America and the Caribbean, they raped us, all of us, men, women, and children, were all sodomized and raped. When they stole us from Africa, they raped us, men, women, and children, and they didn't distinguish, they sodomized all of us. They sold us, they sold our children, they punish us, and to punish us, they would put tar, and feather on us and burn us alive. They would tie us to horses and send the horses in different directions, ripping us apart. They would beat us to death sometimes. They would cut our heads off just to test to see how sharp their swords were. Other times, they would put our heads on sticks or spikes and display them as a deterrent 
to others who would challenge them. They would hang us from trees, thus the term strange fruits. There was a superstition that if you put a dog on the feet of someone with syphilis, the, 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 the dog would pull the infection out of them and into themselves. And these oppressors would take newborn babies and put them on their feet or under their syphilis-infected feet, hoping that the infection would be pulled out of them by our newborn babies. They are so manipulative. If Jamaica is independent, why is Elizabeth Windsor, our oppressor, the head of state? Why do we pay her and her dependents a salary? Why do we maintain a residence in Jamaica for her and her descendants? Has anyone stopped to ask what this little three-day visit to Jamaica is costing the Jamaican taxpayers? Can Jamaica afford this visit? Elizabeth Windsor needs to be put in iron bracelets and locked up for crimes against humanity and genocide. She has been complacent in allowing Justin Trudeau to turn Canada into a dictatorship and for allowing and being in agreement with millions of people being murdered, maimed, and suffering debilitating injuries from drinking the lemonade. Some of these individuals are people who I have known, some of them are family members, and some are friends. So this is not a conspiracy theory. These are people who I personally know, who since drinking the lemonade are suffering from debilitating illnesses. And I know of people who have died as a result. She allowed Justin Trudeau to bring in foreign nationals to link up with Canadian thugs and trample on old women with horses and beat up on people. Those people have names and faces and the world was watching. The world has not forgotten. And under the Copyright Act, I have a video to show to you. It was sent to me by another colleague who often sends me interesting information. It is not in English, but there are subtitles. And this is what the world is saying about Justin Trudeau. I'm just bringing it up. And who knows? <laughs> the international self-appointed censorship body might take this one down as well. Dragi građani, premijeru Trudo. Sloboda, pravo izbora, pravo na život i zdravlje, pravo na rad za mnoge od nas, 
To su temeljna ljudska prava za koje su milioni građana Evrope i svijeta položili svoje živote. Za obranu naših prava i prava naše djece, koje smo stjecali stoljećima, mnogi od nas, uključujući i mene, spremni smo riskirati vlastitu slobodu i položiti vlastite živote. Nažalost, danas su među nama i oni koji gaze te temeljne vrijednosti. Kanada, nekada simbol modernog svijeta, je pod vodstvom vaše kvazi liberalne čizme proteklih mjeseci postala simbol kršenja temeljnih ljudskih prava i građanskih sloboda. Gledali smo kako konjima gaze žene, kako samohranim roditeljima blokirate bankovne račune da ne mogu platiti djeci školovanje, da ne mogu platiti lijekove, da ne mogu platiti račune za struju i vodu, da ne mogu platiti rate kredita za svoje domove. Za vas su to možda liberalne metode. Međutim, za mnoge građane svijeta to je diktatura najgore vrste. Budite uvjereni da građani svijeta, udruženi, mogu zaustaviti svaki režim koji želi uništiti slobodu građana bilo bombama, bilo štetnim farmaceutskim proizvodima. Hvala. That's very interesting. I have no idea what that language is. And even when I wasn't reading the subtitles, I understood most of what he was saying. I have no idea what that language is. Interesting. Anyway, continuing on. The people in Jamaica who were protesting the visit, they have it right. Do not get used to your future oppressors. They are cementing themselves as your future oppressors because they are set to take over when Elizabeth Windsor dies. Charles will never be king. These two will be taken over when Elizabeth Windsor dies. And she's already dead. It is time for those blood-drinking vampires to go. They're not our friends. They are a part of the 1%. Jamaica will be much better off if they cut them loose. It's time for them to go. Stop looking up to your oppressors. Send them on their way. Moving on to other things. Ron Robinson, you can report me if you wish. You need to resign. Don't be surprised when your wife asks, why is she calling for your resignation? Or when your daughter asks, Dad, why is she calling for your resignation? And maybe your employer will finally do the right thing and show you the door. Or maybe one day, one of your subordinates will have the courage to speak up. Whichever one of these situations occur, your day is coming. I'm Karma Haraj. I wrote to you and requested a copy of the arbitrator's decision and you've not provided same to me to date. Yet there is talk all over the place that it is published on a website. If you're not in receipt of same, why did the union agree to an extension according to the collective agreement which all involved except the people it's supposed to protect have been trampling on. The only way the arbitrator can delay his ruling 
is if the union and the company agrees to an extension. If the union has not agreed to an extension, what follow-up have you done in order to obtain the ruling? And why would the union agree to an extension when people have been out of work, unpaid, leave of absence initiated by the company and not the individuals? Why would the union who is supposed to be there to protect us agree to an extension? Why isn't the union making every effort to have this matter resolved? And oh, by the way, you said to me that the hearing that was that had taken place on January 29th was not expedited. You better go back and look at what you put in writing and sent out. Moving on to other things. Some people are wondering why I said in a previous video that my father had eight children to educate when he fathered more than eight children. Well, when you put your life out there, it is only fair for questions to be asked, and I will answer. My father fathered 12 children, eight with my mother, and four others who are all older than I am. My brother Ken was murdered by a family friend, and his murder was made to look like an accident. His murderer got away from mortal justice, but he didn't get away from Yahweh, the creator, the most high, Hawa, the giver of breath, Ahaya. My other brother was hidden from my father for over 50 years, but my father never gave up searching for him. But he did, with the help of my sister, Denise, find that brother in his old age. They had a good relationship and spent time talking, visiting, and getting to know each other. That brother received his inheritance from my father and promptly sold it for less than it was worth. I guess he didn't understand the concept of generational wealth. The Bible says that a good man leaves his children an inheritance. My father secured an inheritance for all of his children long before he left Jamaica. But not all of them got an inheritance. And I will get into that a little later on. When you receive an inheritance, you should expand that inheritance in some way and pass it on as an inheritance to your own children, thus creating generational wealth. That is something that melanated people doesn't seem to understand. My other brother, who claims to be the oldest, was already a grown man and already had his education paid for, but he didn't make use of it. When he finished high school, my father asked him what he wanted to do with his life. He said he wanted to be a tailor. My father arranged for his lessons in tailoring and paid for them up front. When my brother was supposed to be getting his lesson, in tailoring, 
He was everywhere but at his lessons. He even ended up in Bowerswood, Bagoak, St. Catherine's, at our grandfather's home one time, and we lived in Clarendon. My grandfather, who knew that he was supposed to be learning his trade, scolded him and sent him back to class. Grandfather then sent a letter to my father, but the letter didn't arrive until weeks later. I think my brother got a good talking to and a good ass whipping when my father found out what he had done. But you see, back in those days, it took a while for mail to arrive. Anyway, shortly after that incident, my brother ran away from home. I was very young, but I remember the day he ran away from home. I saw him leave. He was wearing a black shirt. It was a black short sleeve shirt and khaki pants. He had gone down into the garden or the field, as we call it, and cut a hand of green bananas from a bunch of bananas. He was supposed to be weeding between the gungu, the gungu trees, which were at the front of the property, but off to the right side below the goat pen. He came up from the field around the new house that was being built. He walked under the damsel tree, then past the willow tree, through the gungu trees, along the goat pen, and disappeared into the bush. It was 1969, and I was playing in the veranda with my brother Lennox, who was a baby. There were other people on the veranda, but I don't remember for certain who they were. They were my siblings, possibly my sister Denise and some other brothers and my, sis my older sister. But I left the veranda because I was curious about what he had why he had the bananas. I thought he would eventually take them to the kitchen, which was separate from the house, and to the right, if you're facing south. When I lost sight of him in the bush, I returned to the veranda and didn't think much about it anymore. I did not see my brother again until 1971. My sister Heather was a baby. My brother Warren and I, we were coming back from somewhere. We may have gone to Mr. Morgan's shop to pick up some groceries that were, um, because my mom, on her way to Mapen, she would sometimes buy groceries and leave them at Mr. Morgan, buy groceries from Mr. Morgan and leave them there and instructed my brother, Warrell, and myself to pick them up and take them home. So we were walking back home when a guy on a red and white motorcycle with a girl on the back as a passenger pulled up beside us and asked, Daddy of Ayad? Meaning, is Dad at home? We told him that he was and he rode on ahead of us. By the time we arrived at home, he was in deep conversation with my father, who had obviously welcomed the prodigal son home. He had a red and white portable record player with him, and his girlfriend was a passenger on the bike. Her name was Cherry. <laughs> Eric Donaldson, festival winning song, Cherry O Baby, was burning up the airways. After dinner, what song did he play over and over on his record player? Cherry O, Cherry O Baby, <laughs> don't you know I'm in need of thee? If you don't believe it's true, 
what have you left for me to do? <laughs> I think they spent two or three days and then they were gone. He came back the following year and visited with my dad who welcomed him again. You see what people don't understand about my dad is he loved his children, every one of them. He loved them. And he had a big heart. And no matter what his children did, he tried to help them out of situations. And he was always willing to forgive until he had had enough. The next time he came back, my mom welcomed him because my dad was in Canada. Eventually, my mom joined my dad in Canada and he, he, that brother was supposed to follow my mother, but he made all sorts of excuses and didn't do what he was supposed to do. Eventually, the eight children that my mom and dad had together joined them in Canada. Eventually, at my mom's urging, the invitation was extended once again to that brother for him and all of his children to join us in Canada and he accepted all the expenses for him and his children to come to Canada was paid by my dad including the amount for their plane tickets my father went to the airport with other family members and the anticipation of seeing his son and his grandchildren at the airport. He went to pick up my brother and his children, all of his children. And when my brother walked out of the airport, he was alone. My father questioned him about the children and wanted to know why they were not with him and what he had done with the money for their medical and their plane fare. He gave my father a story about needing to do dental work on his teeth and other things. My dad was crushed and disappointed. And because my brother was now living in Canada, my father could no longer apply for my nieces and nephews to come to Canada. But their father, my brother, could. He had no interest in doing so. I pushed him for many years to apply for them. And it was one excuse after the other, one disappointment after the other. Eventually, my father got fed up and cut him right out of his life. I think the pain of the constant disappointment became too much for my father to handle. After my nephew my brother's son, was murdered in cold blood. He decided to be a father to him. It was too late, and he blamed everyone and everything except himself for the death of his son, which could have been prevented. I would listen to his excuses and his crying for hours. He would tell me the same stories that were full of lies over and over. And then he would cry uncontrollably for what felt like ours. 
And I would just listen because no one else wanted to hear the lies and the excuses. Even though he was a lousy father, he was still my brother and a human being. His children have done well for themselves and they don't ask anybody for anything. If they don't have it, they work to achieve it. And they are the most gentle, loving, giving human beings you will ever come across. They didn't have it easy. And I, for one, am proud of the people they are today. This summer will be one year since my brother passed. And I hope that in death, he has found the peace that he didn't have in life. I don't think my brother ever grew up. I don't think he ever took responsibilities for his actions and his inactions. I don't think he ever took responsibility for his mistakes. I sincerely hope that he found peace. My other brother is a famous jockey in Jamaica. He was given the same opportunities as the rest of us, but he decided to pass on them and pursue his own interest. But things didn't go well between him and my father because while he was pursuing his own interests, he took his share and everybody else's share of my father's livestock until there was nothing left for him to take. And that caused a rift between him and my father. A rift that was never mended. I don't think he knows that my father has taken his permanent rest. And I don't think he cares. He knows how to contact us if he wants to. But he hasn't. I hope... That clears up the question of why I said my father had eight children to educate. One brother was murdered before he was a teenager. One brother was hidden from my father until he was well into his 50s. One brother didn't want to be educated by my father. And the other brother, his education was paid for, but he didn't make use of it. And that's reality. I am at peace with myself. I am at peace with my world. And I am at peace with my Awa, the giver of breath. Ahaya. I wish you Baruch and Shalom.